Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Connecting Greeks. I am your host, Ari, and with me is Foti. Say hi, Foti. Yasu, Yasu, Yasu. And we got the big man, the legend, Angelo Tsarugas over in L.A. Angelo with the COVID brain, how are you doing? Yasas, Palikaria, Ari, and Foti. Great. Another... Uh, we had a, it's cooled down a bit in Los Angeles today. It's uh, was it 82 today? Oh, wow, that's so a nice day! Difference. Nice day. It cooled down from the hundreds we were in last week, and you know, uh, we're still unemployed, we're still doing the connecting Greeks, which is better. What better way to connect with Greeks than during a pandemic? Beautiful. <laughs> so, if people because we can call people so, going, uh, hey, then okay, come on the show. Nobody's saying no to us, so Angelo, nobody's working. Now, are you saying that when the pandemic's over, it's like Stefanistume? Probably, probably. Oh, I hope not. But Keep I think the pandemic going. Whoa. And uh, yeah, so guys, you guys had a good week. Uh, uh, Ari, you're in Washington. Uh, actually, I'm in Boston right now. You're in Boston, and Forty, you're in Boston. I'm in Los Angeles, and you know the good thing about connecting Greeks is that we're able. We've been connecting with Greeks. All around the world, uh, Greece, UK, Canada, and today, uh, uh, bringing on a, a guest. I, I I met this a guy. Uh, I did his show in Australia. As you guys know, I have a huge following in Australia, especially Melbourne, one of my favorite cities in the world. And uh, he said, he goes, I want to interview. You. I met him when we were down there. Uh, but uh, we, uh, his name's Daniel Sam, but we know him as Plasticos EP. Now, I, I nicknamed them Plasticos because it was Plastic EP, if you're Aussie, <laughs> but you're Plasticos. And he's, he's so much energy and so much fun. And I really love this guy. So let's welcome on two connecting Greeks all the way from Melbourne, Australia, my good friend and now going to be your good friend, Plasticos EP. Yasu Plastico. Yasu Plasticos. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm on Melbourne. I gotta tell you, I'm in lockdown. My wife's got me tied to the chair here. <laughs> and you're How not you going doing? anywhere. Hey, listen, I gotta tell you, you guys being overseas makes no difference because we could be in a lover. And I just want to ask you with this podcast, I noticed you go, you're not coming on because it's Greek time. And you guys think I'm in Perez waiting for a ferry or something. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now, now, uh, now, plastic. Let me tell you, I, I nicknamed you Plasticos because I love that. We try to Greekify things. I know, I'm just telling you right now, I heard as of now in Canada, Canada went reverted to total lockdown again. They can't go to Europe. They can't come to the US. There's a complete third wave in Canada and they've shut everything down. Bars, restaurants, productions. Tell us the situation in your words, and it's still Melbourne. Okay, I've got to tell you what's Melbourne. happening in Melbourne at the moment. Tomorrow we're waiting for announcements. We weren't allowed to leave our house up to five kilometres. They made it like 20 or 25 now, but tomorrow is the big day. We were mm. going to get some announcements. Right. But I want to talk more about you guys because I've got to tell you, Angelo's so big in Australia. The guy sold out a tour and couldn't come. The day he was meant to come to see I know, that sucks. Day, is the day he did the interview, Mazimo. Yeah. And you've got to understand something. I'm That's born right. in Australia, okay? <laughs> My parents came from Northern Greece, from Florida. I love it. I've been born and raised. I went to Greek school. I, I hated Greek school. But, you know, <laughs> I love the Greek spasmena. I go to a lot and I talk half English, half Greek. They don't care. I say to them, whoever I'm talking to, and they go, yeah, that's you know? <laughs> like, They love it. Love. I love talking in and out of the Greek and the English. It's the best. And my wife, she's got a passport that says Vaso. Her name's Vicky. So every time we go overseas, they ask her, are you Vicky? Are you Vaso? Like, what is it? I always have these problems when <laughs> I take my wife. We uh, all have these it, alternate names. Right, exactly, right? I, I, you, do you not notice that when you travel the other game like Spiridula or all these names, and then you're, you you go by Sula, yeah. and you're like, "My, I'm a Vangelos," and you know, and then you got Fortios and uh, Ari, Aristides. Which, you know, Aris, Aristides, you know, uh, you know, and, and we have all these names, <clears throat> and I always notice uh, plastic 
what if you're Greek, like you said, you don't. It's like Tourette's. I have Greek Tourette's where we can talk in English, kemita pamisalinika, and it, and we run right into it, and we we don't even realize we're doing. Do you, do you guys all find that happens? All the yeah, time. Yeah, but I love that. Let me tell you. When I went to Greece, the first thing I heard was I went to a little cafe near, and the first thing I heard the boss say, "Taki and anaraki." I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and look, we went to a place called Nafplio. You see this cup? Yeah. This is what I don't like. This used to be the capital of Greece, Nafplio. You see it? Nafplio, right. yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to buy four of these, four cups. My wife finally let me buy two. I mean, Why, <laughs> Why did she only let you buy two? I wanted to buy four. She said, buy two. Like, you know. What is it? What I need two, I need four. <laughs> she tries to really so, win. <laughs> yeah, if, if they don't go, isn't it funny? Do you find because you know, especially when you go to Greece, the hot spots for tourism in Greece are usually Australia, America. But I always find the Greeks get a kick out of the Aussies, the Americans, and the Canadians. Oh boy. For some reason, they look at the western, the western side of where the Greeks are. Tell me, Plastic, when you went to Greece, what was obvious to you that was different about them compared well, to the to way say, we I'll were? I'll talk about Greece, yeah. but I want to say, <coughs> Melbourne here and Australia is like Canada. So when you talk to yeah. me, I've been to Canada, to Toronto. Yeah. i got relatives in Kitchener. It's like Melbourne. But going back to Greece, what you got to understand is we come from the north, but I like it near the beach. I mean, why wouldn't you go to places like Parga? First time I went to Parga, I don't know if you've ever been there. It's no. the greatest place, a seaside port. It's great. And also Paros. I went to Paros, so I loved it. Beautiful. You go there and there's like 10 little taverns for your dinner time. And you go there and everyone's just gone to one. The other six are empty. And the little boats are there bringing in calamari. And they hang it up like on the clothesline. And you say, can I have cala calamari, palacaro, palacar whatever? Paracalo, my voice is right. <laughs> and they grab it off the the line and they cook it on the spot and you eat like a king. Why would I be in Australia when I could go and live in Greece six months of the year and be treated like a king? It's the best place in the world. When I go there, I'll tell you. I went to Paros. I went into this little water. There was no people there, just three German tourists. The minute I went in that Nero, I swear to God, it was like I'm close to God and everything, every worry in your head just lifted. It was like I was reborn. That's the beauty of Greece. Yeah, well it's, like a, well it's like a baptism every time you go there uh, of life, right? If you think about it, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's, it gives you that re re My daughter, who's eight years old, say, Daddy, can we go back to Greece? We can't go. And, and <clears throat> let me ask you, because... Uh, I, you're you're a proud Helene like we are, and and I love your show, and I and I love the way that you know, on your show that you do on your podcast, the plastic EP because you interview a lot of people, uh, musicians, artists, chefs, whatever. Do you find is it just comes natural to you that the Greek side of us comes out regardless of what we do? Exactly, and also I know that being Greek, you got selective hearing. You only hear yep. what you want to hear. It's like I talk to my wife, right? And I expect like normal questions, conversations. And it's like, this is the best example I can give you. I say to my wife, where are the nuts in the kitchen? Like, you know, nuts to eat. She goes, they're in the kitchen. That's not what I asked her. I asked her where. And then she says, in the cupboard. So I go in the kitchen and there's 20 cupboards. And now we're playing the game, pick the cupboard. So after I go through 19, what is it? I'll find the last one at the bottom. That's always the last covered. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, what, what is it? And you know, it's, it's funny you say that because Greeks are so literal. And I, I, and I do this, I, I do this in my comedy, but I pick out the idiosyncrasies that we have. And it's always like, like one guy, my friend said this the other day, and I thought it was hilarious, you know, because I, I made a joke about him. He goes, so it's so funny that I had something I was going to give you, but guess what? Now I'm not giving it to you. Oh, dude. And only Greeks will say that my, stuff. My mother has a famous saying that you just said. I was going to tell you something, but now I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Who talks like that? We do. 
passive Yeah, but a lot of Greeks growing up kids, they either cop the pandofla to the head, like you say, or the belt. Yeah. <laughs> My mother was awful with the pandofla. She never had good. Oh, yeah. She's like but a ninja plastic. with the pandofla. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if, if you imagine our parents now, if there was child services, then all our parents, <laughs> where's your young papu in prison? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's right. Do you know the best one? At the back of my house, right, I've got a little gate. So what happens is it was night time and I bought three pizzas. So I looked at my gate and I thought it was unlocked. So me going to check it, it was actually a bit wet. It was like rainy. I thought I'll go check the gate. So when I went, I slipped. And the three pizzas flipped over inside the boxes. I collected the boxes, went inside. And what I did is I scratched my leg, right? Like there was some skin. So a friend of mine said, what happened to your leg? Did your wife do that? I said, no, 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 no. My wife does head injuries. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, but, it's, but you see, this is the thing. Right now, let me ask you, how important is it uh, to have humor this time? We're eight months into this pandemic. People are losing their freaking minds. And I think yeah. we need, we, am I right? I, mean, I think we need a little bit of humor, but I think people are losing uh, humor, meaning they're so pent up. I go, look, none of us are working. Everybody wants, uh, fi- financially, we're trying to keep it together. We have families. <clears throat> how important is it now? Even what we're doing, guys, right now, how important is this? Because people still have to loosen up and they don't. And, I, and especially, and I'll choose Greeks. Greeks do have a good sense of humor. We're getting better. But I find like a lot of Italian or Persian or Armenian uh, cultures, our cultures like to make fun of people, but we don't necessarily like it when people make fun of us. How true is that? That's true because we're we're Greeks. We can't help it. No one can beat us. You know, it's in our our ego. And also I want to say what you've said is right. We need to entertain people. They need it more than ever. It's no big deal, but within four or five months, I've done 250 interviews, and every day people are thanking me. Thank you. I wake up. I watch your show. It keeps me entertained. And, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's not about left eye. It's not about money. It's not about nothing. We need entertainment now more than you think. And this is what makes you on the net. The fact that you guys have got a program – the rich is out to all the Greeks in the whole world. And even they're going to watch this in the lather. What more do you want? Yeah. You've got to be so proud. I just got to say, Fortis, are you related to John? Uh, it depends. <laughs> it depends. What's, what's in it for me? I'm saying, are you related to John Stamos from the from the TV show or not? I, w- look I, wish, like him. I wish I was, brother. I wish I was. Okay, sorry. I had to ask. <laughs> you, you, know, you, you, uh, you know, I've gotten, I, I've been lucky to hang out with John a few times. I told him, I, you know, my mom loved your house, Yamato Spiti. <laughs> and he didn't understand it, full house. He was the what? <laughs> you know, in Greece, you know what they call your show, Yamato Spiti. And John's Greek isn't very good. Goes, Yamato Spiti? I go, yeah, full house. Mm. Oh, Yamato, Yamato Spiti, yeah. Because you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, plastic, uh, for the exception of Ari and Forti, most Americans are, uh, they're kind of highly dysfunctional when it comes to speaking Greek. Not all, but mm-hmm. most. And because we grew up in Canada and Australia, first generation, and in all fairness to our American friends, you're fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh generation now Greek here. So there's more generations of it. And I excluded you, Forti, and Ari. So I don't want Americans getting mad at me. God. But I, I, you know, but EP, let me ask you, your show. Now tell us about your show. Tell us who you've been interviewing. I, I want the world to know what your show is about so they can watch you on your show. I appreciate <laughs> it. If you go to Plastic EP Live TV, there's 250 interviews. I'll just mention a few people in the world that I've interviewed. Susie Quattro, love her. Nice, nice. Right. Um, Mary Wilson from the Supremes. That's wow. amazing. She's big, right? Yeah, also um, the one that did that song, Young Girl, Gary Puckett, and the Union Gap got Gary yeah. on. Yeah. You remember that song, Young Girl, Young girl get, get Out of My Heart? Of my heart. Yeah. How old is Gary uh, Puckett? Ron Dainty, Sugar Sugar. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Da, da, da. Those guys are old now. 
Nah, they're young. They're still going and they're still Bravo. performing. Bravo. And then I've met, I've interviewed a lot of Beatle people too that write books. It just, the list doesn't stop. Even like now, I've got interviews going day and night. I get up at 5 a.m., 3 a.m. I don't even know what Bravo. time it is anymore. Bravo. And what what time is it now? Greece, what time is it in Melbourne? Love it. What time is it in Melbourne? Now, I'll tell you, it's uh, 10 to 12 in the afternoon. And as you know... Oh, um, perfect. That's perfect. Angelo, once the shops open up, we'll be able to go to Oakley and have Suvlaki down there. There's a now, little let, strip, let, a little suburb called Oakley. It's Angelo's wonderful. favorite place. Tell them about really it. really is. So I want to, okay, so for people to understand, <clears throat> Melbourne, where uh, plastic, uh, plasticos is, Melbourne, Australia, outside of Greece, is the largest Greek populated city in the world. Right. And it's got a wonderful Greek community. I mean, wonderful. So the, I think in the, in the succession of Greek cities in the world, I could be wrong, it goes Athens, Thessaloniki, Melbourne, yeah. New York. Toronto, Chicago, Montreal, I want to say London, then Bo uh, Boston, and then it goes, you know, it goes on. And <clears throat> so imagine, guys, um, think of a suburb in Boston, like Arlington or one of those or Quincy, but the whole suburb is Greek because you have wow. Brunswick and you have Oakley. And I mean Greek, Zakharoplastia. I'm talking Estatoria. Uh, there's so much there, and it's it's like it's like being in Glifada. Nice with with, with complete Greeks, and oh. the Aussies love it. And Lonsdale Street, where I did my shows, <clears throat> which is in more downtown uh, in the city of Melbourne, was the old Greek town. And like you know, like all like most Greek towns in Toronto, Detroit, they move out of the city, then they go to the suburbs. I'm sure in Boston, same thing. Mm -hmm. where they are in Washington, wherever you want to go. So it's amazing. Like I, you go there and you're like, it's weird. Cause you go to, if you go to Oakley, you think you're in a suburb of Athens, wow. yet you're in yeah. Australia. Now you flew from Los Angeles to go to Australia. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. And how long is that flight? Look, from LA to Australia to go to, I think to go to Melbourne from here is about 14 and a half, 15 hours. Right. Direct. 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 Yeah. Oh, Qantas. So it takes about a day. And the thing is, when you go to Australia, you lose a day because of the time. They're 16 hours ahead of us, 15 mm. or 16. And then you go to different ones. So that, that's where we go. But it's, if anybody can ever, you want to talk about Filotimo, Filoxinia, and the hospitality, you're not going to find better. And I'm not saying it because plastic's on. The mm -hmm. hospital. <clears throat> the hospitality of the Greeks in Australia is second to none. You feel like you're home. They just have a weird accent. That's all. There's <laughs> kangaroos running around. But it's great. I love it there. I just got to say something. There's a guy here, for example. We've got the best food in the world. There's a guy here's great. Italian, went to Italy and won the world title for the best Italian pizza in the world. And he's got three restaurants here in Melbourne. Wow. So why That's would I go amazing. to Italy when I just go down the road? It's amazing. The best hey, cappuccinos. The best oh no, coffee. The, now the, the best... coffee. Hold on. I'll stop you right there. Plastic. Guys, the coffee, their coffee snobs there, but I'll tell you why. Their coffee is fantastic there. Aussies have great coffee. Uh, they're not used to the coffee. We like like uh, Dunkin' what? Donuts and Tim Hortons. <laughs> they got, I mean, we have Gourmet and it? the Starbucks, right? What yeah. makes what makes the coffee good in Australia? Dude, I don't know. It's good. It's the best coffee. The beans, the water. No, they buy the best coffee in the world and they have it here. That's what it is. I've they been do. to Canada. I'm not going to say anything about Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. Relatives. No, but, <laughs> yeah. no, but, but goes, we're addicted. Plastic, we're addicted yeah. to Tim Hortons. But yeah, and he goes to me, have a coffee, and I looked at him and I said, are you for real? <laughs> it's like we're addicted to Starbucks here. And Starbucks is Cameno Cafe. It's burnt. Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, the Americans love Starbucks. Well, mind you, America, the world, because a big, but they love that burnt flavor. But you go, to, guys, you go to Australia, every coffee's perfect. I don't know how to explain it to you. They make the perfect coffee and they have amazing chocolates there too. Their okay. chocolate is phenomenal there. Hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It makes absolutely me want to move to Australia now. It's Man, great. you don't know how good it is, but I'll be honest with you now, and I'll talk to you like friends. Yeah. If I had the choice now, 
if this continues the way it's going, and I had the choice of being in Greece or being in Australia, don't get me wrong, but I know somebody that's living in Spain and they're living like the best beautiful life. Yep. If you had to come to Australia or go to Greece to all the fabulous beaches and the sun, you cannot beat Greece. And I'm not, I don't mean that any other way because Australia's change we want everyone to come here but the cost of living has gone through the roof here it's and very expensive to, yeah. it's like no matter what you make it's going up and up and up the cost of living and the way it's going i could see myself six months or eight months in greece just lying near the beach there oh, blame you. having my beautiful mediterranean dinner or lunch mm. walking around in my shorts I mean, come on. You know? <laughs> well, let me let me ask you, plastic. Any country that still has the queen on their money is getting bent over the coffee table. <laughs> Am I right or wrong about that? Because you guys are Commonwealth. Wherever the Vasilisa, wherever her mutra are on the money, is it fair to say that it's a taxation brought to us by the British and they've kept it that way? So whether it's New Zealand, Canada, Australia, Barbados, South Africa. Any country that was under yeah. British rule that keeps a parliamentary system and has that uh, queen who is married to a Greek on her money, because I found I love Australia, but like Canada, everything's become so bloody expensive. Exactly like Melbourne now. It wasn't like this before. This is what I'm trying to say to you. You got to ask yourself down the track, do you want to do? I'll tell you what. A simplistic life is the best life. So what I'm yeah. saying is if you can stretch your money three times more by living in Greece, why wouldn't you go? You know, one thing about the Greeks, they live on islands and they live to 100, 110 years old. Yeah. Because you know why? True. They don't have stress. they got the sun. they got the best meals. What do they do? Wake up, walk around, and they don't know what they're doing. They go to the Kafanil, and you don't call that a life. That's a zoe. That's a lot. You want to have yeah. problems, stay puise and cop the problems. Which we don't even need. Now, the whole the whole sphere of the whole world now has changed. It's not like the yeah. 60s. It's yeah. 2020. You can yeah. go to Greece and do your internet show from there. And I'll tell yeah. you what, you got beautiful women walking past, past Parga. Have you ever been to Parga, the seaside resort? I've it's never been. I've heard. I will now that you mention it. <laughs> Botica sounds nice. But plastic, is it, do you find now we're getting, we're at the age now where we thought our parents were crazy. You know what I told my wife the other day? And I, I kid you not, I've been fortunate to travel the world, do shows, televisions, whatever. I, I enjoy my life, what I do work wise. But you know what I told my wife the other day? When our daughter finishes school here in California, the day after, I want to go to Greece. And day before she has to go back to school, come back to California. And I live in California. here. Taxes are going up. In America, people are upset right now. We have an election in two weeks. Look, I'm a Canadian living in America. I'm not going to crap on America because I do love America. My wife's American. My daughter's American. I, I love California. I love America. But the people are not in harmony right now. There's a lot of grinia. There's a lot of freaking zilia. People don't know what's going on next. And I think for us as Greeks, we're lucky. And I've always said this to people. Everybody in the world should go to Greece once in their life. And they'll look at me going, and I'm not saying because I'm Greek. Go Malakas, once to Greece, you come back and tell me. Mm. And I always said that, even when I was a travel agent, I used to tell people, Go to Greece once in your life, and then you come back and tell me. I've never met somebody who didn't go to Greece once in their life, come back and tell me they didn't want to go back again. Very rare. Your thoughts? Uh, I have to agree, but then you hear all the funny stories about how sometimes our, our friends who visit Greece kind of get uh, taken a little bit of advantage sometimes. <laughs> Uh, they're, well, that's the other group. Well, eh, well, taxi, a little geez. bit. Yeah. Okay. That's tourism in general. <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on. Our, uh, if what, you're right, that you're happens right. in Boston, right. <clears throat> I had this cab driver from Kiev in Boston. 
Oh, my luck has me speak. I told him a shirt in Boston Towers. This guy was taking us to Logan Airport. <laughs> you know, anywhere you look, taxi drivers are whores yeah. anywhere in well, the world. You're right. 100%. But Greek, Greeks are the crown. The, the <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> but to your point, <laughs> to your point, yeah, every, uh, the experience <laughs> energy in Greece is unmatchable. I've, I've, you know, Ari and I have, um, been getting a lot of emails and feedback from folks who are visiting Americans who are visiting Greece and go to Santorini and they come back and it's like they went to heaven. They, they never th felt anything like that when they went to Greece and they can't get it replicated anywhere else. Right. True. Yeah. I just want to say when you go to Greece, the best trip I ever had in Greece was I went with my brother-in-law, Yanni, and Eleni, right? So we've organized it. Me, my wife, and my in-laws. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, no, sorry. I oh, excuse that. Sister-in-law and brother-in-law. Sorry. So anyway, yeah, in-laws. In-laws. Yeah. No, anyway, we arrive in Athens Airport. I've got to tell you a story. So my wife, I tell her before we go, do not take luggage from Australia. Just take and a valitza, one bag. Do not take more. Do not buy everything there. It's mm. cheaper. So here we go. We go in Athens airport. My brother-in-law went there like seven years ago and he said when he went to the airport, everybody knows him when it comes to rent a car. When it comes to rent a car, <laughs> they know him. Okay, so anyway, we arrive in Athens airport. We need a car straight away. This is the best way to travel. Get off the plane, get a car and drive around Greece. Mm. So anyway, we go there. He tries to talk to them at the desk and it's, he's not getting through to them. So he calls me over and I said, we need a car. She goes, Echo after this little small one, this medium size. So I said, listen, do you see over there two women with 20 bags? I can't put my wives in that car. How am I going to fit the 20 bags I go to? Right? So anyway, she goes, all right, and Duxy, I'll see what I can do for you. I've got a BMW. She shows me a picture of a BMW. I said, I can't even fit in that, right? So then she goes, all right, I can give you a station wagon. BMW. And I said, that's all right. Can I get all my valitzas in it? My 20 cases that were stupid enough to bring from Greece. She goes, yeah, should be all right. So anyway, we rent this car. We drive it around Athens three, four days, and then we're going to go to Northern Greece. So before we go, we're driving around my brother-in-law and I, and he's driving around Athens because it's crazy. You don't want to drive in Athens. That's the first rule. Anyway, the brake light comes on. There's no brakes on the car. So oh we ring up the aerodrome. The airport, and we say to the people that we rented the car from, right? The friend of them live, and we're going to die here. We're going to kill ourselves <laughs> driving around with no brakes in Athens. So, anyway, they said, Listen, first door maxi, so I'm your thumb, Alex, I'm your maxi. In other words, come to the airport, you drive, uh, yeah, and yeah. we'll change the car over for another model. Instead of getting the black BMW wagon, we'll give you the white one and we'll check the brakes, everything's all right. So half doing suicide and getting back to Greek airport, we swap over car. Now we're on the road. Now we're going up north in a, in a BMW. And the one thing I can tell you about Greece, you're traveling, I think, what is it? 140 kilometers. The, the freeways there are the best because the Germans made them, right? Yeah, they're nice freeways now, yes. You go there and you just drive where you want. And I'll tell you what, we stopped at all these beaches and we had the best holiday, nothing planned. Just drop in and do what you want. And we love we went Now, Parga, Parga is in Macedonia, right? Parga, Parga is just by, before, uh, it's before... Uh, Thessaloniki? No, it's down, I think it's what's called Laros, Larissa. Oh, Larry, okay, okay, okay. That's right. That's what I was thinking. It's on the other side, but I've never been there. I'll tell you what, it's heaven on earth. I'm telling you, it's heaven on earth when you I've go heard. to places you don't know. So I anyway, know what happens? This is a story. you got all the backpackers down the bottom of a hill, like three miles away, coming up to swim at the beach. So I parked the, we parked the BMW and we've got our bags like stupid idiots. And I come out, we're looking for a hotel. And there's different hotels. I find a hotel 20 meters from the beach, like 60 feet. You look in your bedroom and there's your beach. And I go to my wife and everybody, let's get this hotel. They're giving us the best 
the best hotel here. And they're going, oh, we might be able to find something better. I said, don't be silly. You're not going to get closer than this one. Right it's on the beach. On the beach. So we ended up yeah. getting it. And the best place to stay at, the best beach and the best taverns, the best everything. Nice. Wow. So that's, nice. that's fun. But let me, isn't it funny how you carry those mess, you carry those memories because I, I remember driving, you know, we were in Rodos, then we went to Athens, then we down to Monavasia, and you know, my dad's from Sparti, so we were outside uh, in uh, Mavrovuni, uh, not to be confused with something else, <laughs> and we and, and we were there, and uh, and <clears throat> we had a like a pension guest house, and I through a friend through my cousin, and my wife goes, let's look, and I was able, uh, I would say the walk you can see. From the house, I'd say maybe uh, 70 to 100 meters from the beach across the road. And we we're 70 euros a night at the in, in August, which is unheard of. Wow. And I said, and I, and I always tell people, where else can you still go in the world? Now, things are more expensive now, even in Greece. If you go to like Santorini's, its own destination, like Mykonos and jet setters from around the world go there. But, you know, if you go to the Choria, which I took my wife, who was, they loved that we brought, we brought Yaya, I have my daughter. If you find, like you said, in, uh, in Parma and all these places, if you go, you can find those places. And that's the thing. And the Greeks, for the most part, if you know the deal, if you got the Greek, I call it the Greek, uh, I'm Greek discount deal. If they know you're Greek, then it's a different story. You're right. Mm. If they know you're sure. not Greek, it's but exactly, but let me tell you, Angelo, this is the best story, right? We haven't gone to Greece yet, and I'm picking out places from the internet where to go. So right. I find a place called Nikki Beach, right? Nikki Beach, because all the big celebrities go there. Christian Ronaldo's been there. This other model's been there. Everyone's been to this place, never heard of it. So we're on the road, and as I said, we're coming out of Sparta, and we're coming down the bottom of Greece. And I said, we've got to check out this place Nikki Beach Resort, right? I ring up and I, and Vicky goes to me, all right, you talk to him. And I spoke to him even in Greek and I go, Post Bama Kala, you must say, Apo Astralia, right? Tell him, Naparo Medio Domatia, ya ena nikta tiburis nakanis, ya mas echonerthme apo a long way. We come from a long way. She said to me, Look, you're lucky, we got a special going. We can do you two nights at this place for something like, 300 or 400 euros that's breakfast everything and we turned for two nights said, that's good that's good piasto and we went to nikki beach it's like four and a half star or five star resort you got to go uh, there yeah. let me explain and when you go there it's the most beautiful pool swimming pools on the beach the beach isn't that great but everybody's in the swimming pool right. they've got models coming in right because they got these afternoon discos on a sunday my brother-in-law yeah. is sitting on the beach, right, watching who's coming in in the, in the little carafia, right? Nice. I loved it. And then I go, we got to go to this, this island called Spetses, which is only 15 minutes away from Nikki Beach. You can either yeah. get the big ferry or these little speedboats that take in seven minutes. So I go up to the lady at the counter at the resort, Nikki Beach Resort, and I said, how do I go to Spetses? She goes... You got to go and see Costa. You got to go to Costa. Costa, right? Costa. I'm going, yeah. okay. Costa. So then anyway, we get in the car. We start driving down and, and I'm looking. Where's Costa? We got to find this guy, Costa, right? Like a. And then I see this sign and it says Costa. It's the place, Costa. It's not a person. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so there's the first stupid thing. And then as soon as we park, I see the big ferry. But then I see these little caravan, these little speedboats. And they take it across in seven minutes. So what happens is we got on these little speedboats and Prince Charles, he went there with uh, Diana when they had their honeymoon. I right. believe they went to Spetses. I think Spetses so we was one in, of their stops, yeah. We checked out this <coughs> island and went for an afternoon. And what happens is when the little speedboat takes you, you then walk around the island. They don't allow cars. They don't allow That's nothing. Right. This beautiful That's right. lunch on the beach. Pick any tavern you want. There's no people. So we had our lunch there, and then the great thing was a speedboat wasn't meant to come on this side of the island where we'd walked. And I see this guy dropping off five people. So I think to myself, well, I'm going to walk now 50 minutes back 
if this guy takes me from where I am now, let's go back to the resort. So I go, hey, Ella, there, Buddhist and Paris, the must. Piso, he goes, yeah, Ella, Ella, or like an illegal. <laughs> <Stop> <laughs> so, seven minutes, boom, back to the resort. That's that's what you remember in these trips. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like, you, you know the artist uh, Leonard Cohen, uh, who's a legend. Leonard Cohen uh, met a girl in Paris named Suzanne, and followed her to Hydra. Mm. You know, because you got Hydra, Spetses, and Egina, and stayed for ten years. Wow. I imagine that's the magic of Greece. And, and like you saw the women. So it, when I hear these stories, it, it's Greece is so like that. We were in Santorini and there's a bus. I go, Pupas, Pausto, Pausto, Stiboli. My wife goes to get in. And she says, Where are we going? I go, I don't know. It's, it's Santorini. Put up on it. It's an island. We go down there. And my wife, it's so funny. She goes, You just got in a bus. You don't even know where it's going. Who cares? <laughs> that's right. And you can do that, like you said in Greece. Pupas. Uh, best man, he's hold on a boom man. Best man, <laughs> and that's and that's what I love. See, everybody wants that spontaneous uh, mm. life. Everybody wants to go somewhere and be local and spontaneous. Well, guess what? Go to Greece because everything is local and spontaneous. One hundred percent. That's exactly right. I got to say, when I went to Santorini, I had a car, so I'm driving around. And these big, when you're going around these curves, it's not like there's a, a little fence or something. There's really? A drop, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a drop of 500 miles straight to the ocean <laughs> if you miss the turn. Right? I'm not joking. There's no barrier. Imagine that night. It's crazy. So anyway, when you're going this kind of these roads in Santorini, that's the biggest drop you could ever have in your life. You've gone over the hill. You've gone for the ride of your life. You're gone. Anyway, as I'm driving around, you see me crap Petrus. You see little stones falling, and I'm driving, and I'm pushing for some saying to my wife, if one of those big stones falls, we're gone, because the car wasn't big, right? And I'm looking up, and these big petrus are dropping little ones down, and I'm going, you know, mm. <laughs> what's happening? That's what I love about Greece. It's so unpredictable. <laughs> it's too funny, but it's the, at the same time, it's what makes you want to go back. I think Everybody that goes to Greece has a unique adventure. You can't go to Greece twice and have the same trip. Never. Never going to happen. So but let me ask you. So I mean, it's obvious about the sun and the sand and the hospitality. But it really is the people. To me, the people are... Uh, I was at a restaurant in Sparty, And I was sitting there and I'm looking at the menu. And the guy's behind me. And, the, and you wouldn't hear this anywhere else in the world. I go, I don't know what I eat. And the guy looks at me and goes, I did a good dress of paragilis. And, you know, it's so funny, you fat bastard. Are you going to eat something or are you going to read a book? And I started laughing. And the guy looks at me and goes, because to them, it's Tuesday. But for us, it's hilarious. <laughs> you know, it, it, when you go there, it's just hilarious. <laughs> but that's good so so plastic tell us uh because you, you've been able to travel and the guys i want ari and forty who should go to melbourne one day and they should go uh, uh do you find right now uh with everything the way it is in the world do you think we're at a point in our lives now that we're think is the reason why we talk about greece because like they, they've had hardships there too they have a tough economic times uh, they're coming out of it now with this new prime minister. I think he's doing a great job in Greece and they're on the road to recovery. But do you think now, especially with the pandemic, that the reason we talk about and love Greece so much is because it just reminds us of happier times in our life? Is that mm. fair to say? Yes, but also I've got to say this because you've got to look at economics. Now, I can tell you, Angela, if you're not in Los Angeles and you don't have all these commitments, and you can be in Greece on the net doing your show. There's no difference. But I'll tell you what, the lifestyle and the way you live there, you'll live like a king. So it doesn't matter what you do in your life. You got to ask yourself, what do you want? I'll give you an example. Right. If you wake up every day and you just want material things, that's not what life is about. It's going back now to simplistic times. As I see it, I don't need 20 suits. I don't need five cars. I want the best food. Like a Mediterranean dish, I make it at home. I love it. Fresh fish. 
I love it. When I go to Greece, I don't go not to have a good time. I go there and I spend. And the amount of money I spend is, if I see somebody, I'll buy them something. You know what I mean? It's like right. cafe this. Not a problem because it costs us nothing. But it's the people there that respect us as being Greeks or Australians or Americans or Canadians. The fact that we go there, they need our patronage. They need our tourism. Yes. Now the tourism in Greece needs us more than ever. And by you doing this show, I can tell you this particular show that we're doing now is the best advertisement for Greek tourism because I tell everybody, as soon as this pandemic's over, go to Greece. If you're going to come and see me in Australia, and I'm talking to you now, I must say Elinus, right? Go okay. to Greece. Because I, I can agree. tell you, you're going to have a better time and your money's going to go further and you're going to be more relaxed and you're going to just you go come, there and forget all this fasseria. That's you how I back, see it. Nick. You come back as a different person for sure. Now, now, gentlemen, I agree with you, but I'm going to be a devil's advocate. Oh. Is It's easy to go to Greece with the money you've earned in America, Canada, and Australia. It's tough for the Greeks to make money sometimes. And yes, uh, my heart goes out to them because they got butchered this year in tourism. They usually average around 35 to 40 million tourists a season in Greece. Mm -hmm. Italy, Spain, and France get about 80 million, believe it or not. The Greeks, for a country not as big, does about half the tourism. And I know for a fact that a lot of hotels, restaurants, uh, transportation companies have taken, <coughs> excuse me, a big hit this year in Greece. Mm -hmm. It's easier. And that's why I try to keep the balance. And I agree with what Plastic is saying. But at the same time, it's easier to go with money that you make in your pocket. It's somewhere where you can earn dollars. But I think it's slowly going to change in Greece. Microsoft is opening there. They're creating jobs. And I think that's the key to it. If young people can have employment and work in Greece, because you want them to have money in their pockets to go to comedy shows, to go to cafes, to go to whatever. So I always try to remind ourselves that, yes, Greece has all these great things, but I also find it easier if I can travel to Greece with 10 grand that I made in the States. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I always try to keep that balance. So, yes, on one hand, there is no place like Greece. But it's also easier to go there when your pockets are full of cash. Yeah, I totally agree. But all I'm saying is, if you go to Greece and you want a lifestyle, you're going to get a lifestyle. Because now, in America, in Australia, we're becoming so complicated our lives, that simplistic, yeah. that simplistic has gone. And there, it's still there. Because they, they know how to live. They have a lifestyle where they don't put the money first. Even though they need money, they're still living, but they do have a life. And you go I there agree. with your money. No, no, I agree. And you're king. I you got no idea. You are king. Go and find one of those beautiful seaside resorts. And I'll tell you what, you won't get up. You need a bulldozer to tie your way. It's that great. <laughs> yeah, no, no, th th I, there's no argument. Like I said, but I also find we have to keep things in a perspective, right? Because I remember, because it's, you know, you can go to Hawaii and Greece and these great places in the world. And the difference is, is when you're on vacation, you know, it's one thing. And I do agree they live a bit, even when they're not in vacation time, it's a better life. But at the same time, I also find it's depressing. So I mean, we're going through it now that we're not working. And I know, look, I live in California. The weather's great. The beach is here, whatever. But, you, you know, you can be anywhere in the world. Uh, if you're not working and not earning, it, it's a shit show. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that, that's what I'm saying. But you know what? If you own three houses in Australia, you're better to rent the three and go and live in Greece and live off the rent. Well, that, that's the way to do it. If your money's working for your money, don't go to Greece. And I think that's what the Greeks are doing now. You know, I know I have cousins in Canada with properties and this and that in America. And I asked myself, I know this guy here in Los Angeles. He owns about eight shopping plazas, this Greek guy. Uh, he's a bit of a miser, but he's made so much money. And I looked at him. I said, hey, when are you just going to go? He's like 83. And I'm like, look, 
go enjoy yourself. And he goes, I go, it's COVID. How much time do you have left? And, you know, I saw him the other day. He came up to me. There's a group of us that go out once a week. And he goes to me, Yankees Dikyo. Because hmm. I'm working, working, working. I went home, talked to my wife. And I said to her what you told me. I was mad at you when you said it to me. Because you were making it sound like I didn't know how to enjoy my life. And you know what his wife said to him? You don't know how to enjoy your life. Hmm. I go to him, I go to him. How much money do you need? Eggs to cause with the lefta. We know it's going to happen. You're going to die. Your kids are going to take it. Buy Ferrari, snuff it up their nose off, <laughs> off of hookers, golos in Vegas and stuff. And they're going to say, Dad left us a party. Go enjoy it, man. So yeah, cool. Go to your choreo there in Greece and give them money for the soccer team. You know, it's funny. I think what happens, and Plastic made a good point. We're so involved in our lives and left eye and work. We forget the most important thing. Breathe and live. That's the what whole can idea. Tell you, now, you know, here in Australia, I'll tell, tell you how it is. The first generation, like my mom and my dad, they made the wealth. I'm the second generation. I hold the wealth. The third generation going to spend the wealth. That's I what like it that. is. I like that. Well said. Make, well hold, said. and spend. Well said. I like that. But I'm Make telling you the truth. I'm hanging on to everything. And my son's telling me, why don't you sell, Dad? And I'm going, <laughs> don't you want to have something from your grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so you know true. what? I'll be gone. And these people, these people will be rich. And, rich. <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. This is why it's not about money. I'll tell you something. If you want to know how my take is on life, this is my take on life. Life is like a tree with apples. Now, you can't wake up every day and say, I want to make a million dollars. I want to make a million dollars. I'll give you an example. Most people I know that go and work at banks, they cop so much stress. By the time they finish their careers and they come out with their superannuation, they don't live long because of all the stress they've got. All the stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So now... Life is like apples. you got to find that balance. You can't take too many apples off the tree because for one apple you take, there's a can of balance. So what you want is enough money and I need my health. When I go money, that's what happens. You pay with your health. you got to find this happy medium every day. It's like the outer limits, that, that line right, like right, that. Right. you got to be like this every day in that center. And no matter if life goes up or down, up or down, you got to find that medium, happy medium every day and deal with it. Because I can tell you something, I don't want to deal too much in my life. But my family have copped a lot of family tragedies. I've lost a lot of members of my family from accidents. So I don't want to get into it. But what I'm trying to say is, my dad was very young and he got killed, all right? Now, I know my dad didn't worry about it because he lived every day. Right. So the point is, you don't know how long you're going to be here for, like you said before, Angela. You can have all the money in the bank. It doesn't mean nothing. I don't know what you got in your bank book. You don't know what I got in my bank book because no one cares. Because when you go, it makes no difference. Doesn't what matter. Counts is, what do you do every day of your life to enrich it? And not the material things, I've got to buy a suit or I've got to buy a Ferrari. These are false you need to be able to say, I pay my bills. I live comfortably. I eat great meals. I have great friends. There's the wealth there. It's how you live your life. That's all it is. Simplistic. Well, yeah. so I agree. I agree. <clears throat> oh, man. That's it. right on the money. <laughs> right on the so money. I, but, you know, plastic, I found having gone meeting the Greeks in South Africa, like Johannesburg, Cape Town, and especially Australia, I find the further away Greeks are from Greece, the more Greek they tend to be. Isn't mm. that true? Because, I mean, guys, if you go to Australia, you know, you're there's times where you think you're actually in Greece mm-hmm. and certain neighborhoods and stuff and the people, the way they are. And do you find that, is is, is that ring true to you, Plastic? I mean, I know even in America, you Why know, not? It, That's it's totally a melting pot. True. That's totally true. Yeah. And one thing I can tell you about the Greeks, like you go to Canada, they got Greek clubs. You go to yeah. different places. The Greeks are there. The Greeks are established. The Greeks are everywhere in the world. And you know what? It's their heritage and they're proud of who they are. And that's why you find the Greeks, 
That's just in their nature. We're close to nature. We're close right. to Greek, Greece. In other words, I might be born here, but my parents were Greek. Automatically, that makes me Greek heritage. And I'm so proud of it. You know what I mean? And I'm proud of being Australian. But I try to explain to my wife, when you get the passport and you go overseas, for example, and you've got a passport, I'm just giving an example. Right. When they open the passport in Greece, your Australian passport, you're an Australian Greek. Because you used to be, oh, no, I'm Greek, I'm Greek. I said, no, you're Australian Greek. If you're born in Canada, that's where you're born. Can you're Canadian agree? Greek. Born in America, Greek. America. You're proud of who right. you are, but you know where your parents come from, and you're just as Greek. Mm. True. Ari, your thoughts? Yeah, I, you're saying it very well. I, I agree with it completely. I mean, Greeks have, if you look at... Um, I just read an article where um, Greece is the most, well, they, they use the word narcissistic, but I, I, I don't use that word. The most proud of their heritage. Nationalistic. So, yeah. yeah. I, I, I feel like um, wherever you go, like, like he said, we, you could go anywhere. I, I don't know. In Boston, we have Greek clubs. We used to have Greek nights. I don't know any other nationality really that does that. And it's like, well, I, was many. I was like, why, why is it the Greeks that have like this whole like subculture, but not these other nationalities is it because we're fresher here or we haven't been assimilated, but we have been, and we've been here a long time. It's just, we have that pride in our culture. Yeah. Well, you know, plastic, it's been wonderful. We're, we're approaching the hour, but before we let you go, and we're going to ask you for all your credentials. Forti has some questions that we ask all our guests. So it's Forti's corner now. And it's just a little rapid, light uh, questions that he's going to ask you. And we want to take your take. We do it every show. So I'm Forti, ready. it's all yours. So plastic, you know, I'm ready for everything. You, you mentioned uh, to you what's in, one thing that's important is, you know, eating well. And you discuss about fresh fish. You discuss about a good meal. But tell us your favorite and least greek food your most favorite and least favorite greek food my favorite my favorite greek food is souvlaki we're gonna understand even though i'm greek i love italian food i love it so your, so your favorite is souvlaki right but what yeah, about i have your, to say souvlaki right is, and i'll say my least yeah your least my least favorite is fuck yes <laughs> fuck, fuck yes <laughs> fuck why yes. is that I don't know. I, I find it no taste. That's just me. Oh, uh, depends how they're house. made. Yeah. <laughs> and then you mentioned about you traveled, you know, through the, you know, through all parts, the north, the south. But if you could just pick one place in Greece that that would be the place for you to spend the rest of your life, uh, what would that destination be? Well, from what I've seen, I like Parga and I love Lefkada, but Lefkada is sort of like, not like. No, I have to say, from what I've seen in Greece, I love Parga. I found another place that's a, one of the best 200 beaches in Greece. It's hidden away. No one knows where it is. I've been there. I can't mention the place where it is. It's near Akrata. Okay. Right? There's okay. a little bay there, and that place is called Nikki Beach too, and no one goes there. It's totally isolated. It's a total isolated beach, but one of the best 200 beaches in Greece. That's oh, another wow. place that's a hidden spot. Greece has got so many great places. You could go there, no one finds you. And I can tell you what, you live the greatest life. As Angelo said, you just need money. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. I have, I have one more question that's that's kind of off topic. How did you get the term or the name plastic? Okay, the name's plastic EP. And what it comes is the EP comes from the fall record. From the 60s, it's two songs on That's one right. side, two on the other, the extended play. You remember those records? Play yeah, four yeah. Songs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a cardboard cover. And instead oh. of it being made of vinyl, you can use the term plastic. It's made of plastic instead of right. vinyl. Plastic EP, what happens is I was in a band in 1981. You can oh. look it up on the net. It's called Plastic EP and the Records. And then what happens is after the first year, we changed the name to The EPs. And I've written 2,000 original songs. I've got 78 albums out on iTunes, Spotify. Nice. Music has been my life. 
Now, interviews are my life. And the great thing is the Greeks can't help it because the music's in us and always will be in us. That's nice. Right. So, like so plastic, plastic, look, well, um, I, where can people find you on social media and on your show? Not not play on uh, coffee mugs, <laughs> but where, where can they tell us? Where can they find you? Uh, give us your social media structures for people listening today. They can look you up later. All right, go and look at 250 interviews. I haven't even had time to see them, right? On Plastic EP Live TV on Facebook. I've also got another page called Plastic EP. And my real name is Daniel Sam. If they want to be That's my right. friend on uh, Facebook, just look okay. at the word Daniel Sam and you'll see a 60s bubblegum rapper of the monkeys. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> and if you go to YouTube, I've got Plastic EP Live TV. And I've got to say, guys, you know, you've got a fantastic show here, really bringing it home for the Greeks. I don't know of any other show on the internet that does this to the Greeks, like brings them out and connects all these fantastic people. We're so close to the homeland. And I'll tell you what, Greece really needs shows like this that are coming out from the States talking about Greece. And I only got one more question. We've got all these beautiful women underneath me. I see <laughs> pictures, but there's... It's nothing happening. What's the story with that? At least you get to see them. I see nothing. No, I see four pictures. It's good. Oh, you mean the well, Greek, Greek girls are naturally the most beautiful girls in the world. So let, let's. I'll give a shout out to our Greek girls <laughs> and our ladies. Our ladies are beautiful um, until you marry them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway... Uh, <laughs> Well, Angela, plastic. what I got to say while you're having a laugh, is you've got to come to Australia. And I mean this sincerely, and I give you the I'm message. I'm coming next year. Hey, Angela. When you come next year, before you come, we'll do an interview. We'll let everyone know you're coming okay. because they all miss you here and they all love you. And I got to say, my friend Andrea, who organizes the honey, is one of your biggest fans. And yes, and, and, and a shout out to Andrea. He, they sent me, the, he, uh, sent me honey from Australia. Thank you, Andrea. That honey is unbelievable my wife is tripping out over it so hmm. thank you so well, much uh for well. the the meli from australia from our friend andreas uh what's it called again let everybody know it's called manuka honey, manuka oh, honey. Manuka I honey. Say, when you come angelo in my home we're gonna have one of the best greek meals here and um andrew's gonna come with his family my in-laws are coming the ones that, no my <laughs> not my <laughs> My uh, in-laws, yeah, my sister-in-law, brother-in-law. We're going to have one of the finest meals for you here, real Greek, at my home. Nice. I'll tell you what, we cannot wait because Australia loves you, Angela, and I want you to know that. And that's a fact. I love Australia. I love Australia. I'm looking forward to coming back. So uh, from all of us, Daniel, thanks for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Uh, people can watch the center. You're a great guy. You got amazing stories. I wish you continued success with Plastic EP Live TV. And we're going to talk soon again for sure. And I'll give it back to Ari so he can take us out. All right. Thanks hey. again. But I just want to say that name, Plasticor, now. I'm known in the Greek community and in Greece. <laughs> Plasticor. <Thanks to> <laughs> Plasticor. <laughs> it's got a, a little bit of a dirty tinge to it, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, Plasticos. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Australia. And um, we're going to have this as a video and a podcast so people will keep seeing it and hearing it. Uh, Download our app. We have an app uh, in the Apple uh, Store and Google Play. So you have access to Plasticos from your pocket anytime you want. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, Foti, thank you. Thank Angelo, you. as always, thank you. Thank you, Angelo, guys. Very nice to meet you. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.